knee brace actually quite some time before moving moving back up to patient home. And they were all areas of high casualties for Australian yes, troops? Yes, high casualties. And uh, Ypres, the, the whole of the supplies used to come up at night through the Menon Gate. And uh, the Red Baron came over with his circus, his gang of planes. They had complete martial there at the time and bombed the road. And uh, Canadian Labour Battalion, they weren't fighting soldiers, they were Labour Battalion, called out to repair the road. And Rick Coffin came back with his circus with, with searchlights and machine gun them, which I thought was a pretty poor show. We had to bring them in the, the, for treatment. And uh, ultimately, when he was shot down, I was one of the first there when I saw him lying back there with his iron cross around his neck, just dying and dead. I thought, when you have this coming to you, I had no sympathy at all. Towards the end of the war, when the front line was considered to be fluid and it wasn't really a front line and the troops were just advancing all mm -hmm. the time, um, and no doubt the, the overrun Germans who had surrendered were coming back through the line. Did you ever encounter any of those? Oh, yes, yes. First of all, we didn't see any Passchendaele, but uh, Passchendaele would be the worst, in my expression, oh, I'll talk about that later, but on, on the, down at, we, we didn't get down to the Somme until April 1918, and when the Germans had made the 70 mile advance right through pretty well to our, pretty well to army on, as far as our they were turned back there in village Breton over by the Australians. And uh, when, then, up to the, uh, between then and September, uh, incidentally, the whole of the equipment was lost. The British Army lost the whole of the equipment, even their rifles. There wasn't a field piece between us and Paris except our own 18 pounders. The Germans could have gone through in trucks. But they decided to consolidate. And by September, with the might of the American supplies, April the 8th, the Phyllis Brett, the, the logistics were incredible. Crackly wingtip to wingtip, howitzers, artillery, you name it. It was absolutely fantastic. And uh, so our advance against the Germans was just as fast as theirs was. And uh, we couldn't keep up with the, the advance. We were, we were behind the time. We could never get keep up, but we we did encounter the Germans coming back, and at Bray, uh, on the hill there, which is strewn with German corpses, uh, flying down a day old, unmodern when we struck this body of uh, about 20 odd German prisoners coming back with a German officer, and we just spoiled the billy, so we gave them a cup of tea and some cigarettes. They were all young people. The, uh, they had a, a jab, a pocket in their tail, in their jacket, a tail pocket. And he, he apparently just drawn the company pay, and he, he pulled us out and handed me a lot of freshly written German notes from two marks up to hundred mark notes. And uh, so I was pretty well supplied. Uh, when I got back from the front, I cashed cashed half them to Franks, kept half in case the only one they wore. They became worse. But I had quite a, uh, a lot of French francs. So when the arms was signed, the day after the arms, I just went off to Paris, AWL. With your hobnose boots? With my, with my pretty American boots, <laughs> and the American shirt, and the load of francs and speaking French as a Frenchman, fluent, absolutely fluent. So I had myself a great time in Paris until I was picked up by a British MP in the Place La Concorde. It wouldn't take 100 francs, that was the pass, amazingly, and 
he went back to the hotel, got my kid, put me on the train. When I got back, the O.C. said, Smart, if you're caught, I want you to tell me, because I'll have to put you on the charge if I'm in trouble. I said, yes, I was caught. So he put me on the charge and fined me 14 days' pay, which I thought was a bit steep because the war was over. But at any rate, uh, that cost me 14 days' pay. It was well worth it. I had a whale of a time. <laughs>